Hey guys, it's Joe from PocketNow.com and I've mentioned in the past that the smartphones that we're seeing now are really, maybe even sometimes more powerful than the desktop computers that I had when I was a kid. So that got me thinking, couldn't we run a desktop operating system on one of our handheld computers or our smartphones? Turns out you can. Let's start out with Windows 95. I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so what we have here is a Nexus 1 running Froyo. And this Nexus, of course, can install non-market apps. I've already configured it so that I can install apps that come from other sources other than the market. Some Android phones on some carriers that have the initials AT&T might not let you do this. So if you've got one of those phones that won't let you install a non-market app, you're out of luck for this. But for everybody else, let me show what you uh, need to do. First and foremost, you're going to need two different packages, if you will. The first one's the APK, the SDL app, and I've got links to that over in the article on pocketnow.com. I've already installed this. To do it, let me show you how to do it here. You just, not that one. You tap on the app. OK. Tell it to install, and it goes ahead and installs the app for you. Okay, normally we'd open it, but I want to show you the other part. So I'm going to say done. The second package that you're going to need is the SDL folder. Now inside the SDL folder are a series of images, uh, binary images in this case, which include your BIOS, your VGA, and whatnot. So you're literally setting up a VGA video adapter, computer BIOS, and then loading in a, uh, an operating system image on top of it. So it's really kind of cool. You're loading up windows in a virtual machine in this case. So let me show you how that's done. Let's come back out here and run the app. Now the name of the app is libsdl and it's right over there. So we're going to tap that and that's going to read all of the information from those image files. And what you can see here is it's loaded up the, uh, the BIOS and uh, the, the VGA BIOS as well. And it's starting up Windows 95. Now, there are several different Windows 95 images that you can get. This is the second one that I tried. The first one was in Russian, and I don't speak Russian, so that didn't help much. Uh, this one is in English, so it helps me quite a bit, but there's no splash screen. The Russian version had the Windows 95 splash screen with the animation going across the bottom. So it was kind of cool. Okay, then I wanted to be quiet there for just a few minutes while uh, it played the Windows startup sound. It's been a long time since I've heard that. Um, what you can see here is you've got the background, which is kind of bleeding through the boot process, and that's what's blinking in the background. The reason for that is Windows 95 doesn't like non-standard uh, display resolutions. So here we're running at 640 by 480 and that's pretty much what we're stuck with. We can't expand it to fill everything out without getting into some, uh, some low-level hacks and tweaks in the Windows 95 image itself. But that having been said, here you go. It's Windows. Now, a couple things to note is Windows was not touch-friendly, Windows 95, so instead you've got your mouse pointer right there. To move it, you've got to touch your finger on it and drag it, and it's not all that accurate. You can see now I've positioned it down by the Start menu, it's kind of difficult to click on something because when you touch your finger down again, it tries to reposition the cursor. But there you see, I've finally, after three or four taps, have been able to select the start menu. I'm going to use the scroll ball, which is analogous to the uh, up and down and left and right arrow keys. We're going to go to programs, and then we are going to go down to Internet Explorer, which is right there. And we're going to load that up. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't tap into your network, so we're not going to be able to see anything. But we're going to fire up Internet Explorer and uh, look at what this was. And I don't remember if this is IE1 or 2. Maybe we'll go in and take a look at that. 
it is taking a little bit of time but there you can see we've got Internet Explorer loaded up and we'll go over here to help see if we can get to it help and it's not letting it do it but in any event it's Windows 95 it's on your Nexus one if you want to go in and use your keyboard here's a uh, another Android tip for you we'll go down here to the address bar and tap in it and then we'll press and hold the menu button and that brings up your on-screen keyboard and we can go to and you can see it's not in there but if I could position the mouse there we go go to pocket now dot com and doing this on camera is a lot slower than doing it in real life we'll hit the back button to get rid of that keyboard and there you go it's uh, redirecting me to home.microsoft.com but it's not gonna get there again because I don't have any networking uh, I don't have an awful lot of stuff I can't install any programs I can't do a lot of things with it but I can show all my buddies look hey I've got Windows 95 on my phone why because I can one thing to remember if you remember from Windows days you can't just exit the app you have to go down to the start menu if I can get it and tell it to shut down otherwise the next time you boot up you're gonna see the scan disk and it is going to go through and run scan disk for you and I don't know any way out of that so you're pretty much out of luck if you don't shut down properly each time but that said why run Windows 95 on a Nexus one the answer because you can now go and impress your friends enjoy if you like this tip give it a thumbs up subscribe to our YouTube channel and please come by and visit us at pocketnow.com for pocketnow.com I'm Joe